Um, we will talk about uh, what you mentioned already, integration of digital volunteers and disaster management and of course using mapping, but also we have a few other examples. And uh, yeah, we both are coming from the THW. It's written there in German. Technisches Hilfswerk is a German federal agency for technical relief. Um, if you come from another country, you can compare it maybe with a fire fighters or I don't know in Sweden they have a MSB or in, in uh, America is a FEMA. It, this is something to compare with and uh, these units usually work yeah, in the field. It means with I don't know hammer or whatever just or water purification just with their hands but uh, since a few years they also working in the digital area and uh, about this we would like to talk about the volunteers who can help uh, yeah, from home or from other places and not to be really in the disaster area. Um, my name is Holger Ziem, I'm a volunteer in the THW and in my normal life I'm working for ESRI, I think it's also written there and uh, I'm usually in the water purification unit and in this uh, VOST team what Volker will introduce a little bit later and yeah, I think I can hand over to you yeah. because it's better if you yeah, present yourself <laughs> okay. and I will sell so, something. <laughs> thank you for joining our session. Um, I'm Volker, I'm working as a volunteer at the THW, as mentioned, um, uh, with a newly set up WAST team, Virtual Operations Support Team. Um, that is, gonna, uh, that is uh, what we are going to show you um, and let's simply start with the first question who ever heard about VOSTs or yeah really and uh, two per, yeah great and uh, already worked with them together okay okay so um, VOSTs are quite new Phenomenon. phenomenon. Um, they are um, here. You can see the the vosts uh, worldwide. Um, we have several vosts in the United States and uh, South America, and we have uh, a lot of vosts in Europe. Um, we are still missing uh, the African continent and the Asian continent and uh, the whole Russian region. Um, the VOSTs are divided into national VOST and regional VOST. Spain is very famous for its, uh, they have a lot of regional VOSTs. And um, they are, um, in their continent, they are organized as a kind of umbrella organization by um, VOST Americas for uh, the South American region or VOST Europe for Europe. And on the top, of everything is the uh, VOS G. That's the virtual virtual operations support group. Um, the tasks of VOS, the national VOS, is uh, monitoring and collecting information uh, via the streams of social media, um, filtering and scoring all the big data that uh, is coming through the social media. Um, to support the local or public authorities or even the government during a crisis to um, yeah, simply uh, generate new information for them. Um, they um, work in the crisis staff and uh, may, may, maybe it's sometimes a little bit helpful to also uh, have a look on the things uh, that are going on on social media. Yeah. Of course, it's um, also uh, sending and sharing uh, useful information, not only with the public authorities, but uh, the VOSTs also can work as a kind of amplifier to alert or warn or inform the public. Um, then a big task for us is also the verification of um, information and fighting hoaxes. Um, during a crisis, um, of course, fulfilling special tasks, whatever the crisis uh, staff is uh, uh, going to, to, to uh, yeah, maybe they, they have simply a question, please try out to, or try to find out the crowd density at uh, some event or something like that. Um, 
we are able to take over the whole or the complete social media activities for the government um, or local authorities and also um, we are doing um, some kind of digital mapping and area analysis. Um, VOST Germany, or as we also call it, THW VOST, um, it's, it's, it's based in the THW since um, two and a half year. Um, in our VOST, um, we concentrate uh, on those three uh, columns, social media analysis, uh, crisis mapping, and uh, collaboration. Um, why we have chosen for the THW, it's um, a, national, um, um, a national agency, so um, without any problems we can do our work um, um, wherever we are in Germany. So, and some, a little bit more information on the THW. Um, the THW is um, mainly consists of volunteers. We have 80,000 volunteers in Germany who are jo joining the, or are, yeah, joining uh, the THW. And um, yeah, the, the tasks of the THW is um, technical and logistical support for the GOs and NGOs, uh, for fire brigades and, uh, or even the police. Um, it's, it's um, te technical and humanitarian um, relief in foreign uh, countries uh, if they are, or if we are assigned to. Um, it's technical relief in Germany. And um, so um, we are part of the uh, national civil protection mechanism. Um, the THW is spread all over Germany. There are 600, around 670 chapters, and um, the units are equipped with heavy tools, so um, hydraulic uh, cutting devices or pneumatic hammers. Um, but they are also very specialized on something, some things. Uh, um, so they are standing clear for um, bridge building, um, illumination, um, water supply and treatment, um, electricity supply and a lot of more. And since uh, two and a half years, uh, also uh, with a VOST. Um, the social media analysis, as I already mentioned a little bit, um, is uh, information retrieval processing presentation to the crisis staff team. Um, very important uh, point and also uh, uh, very time consumption uh, something, uh, uh, point is the verification and geolocalization. So if we find uh, pictures in the social media, of course, we have to verify if they are really from that uh, position, are they really from that crisis. And uh, it's also, of course, the dissemination of information. Um, we have a little bit help. Um, it's uh, um, not everything is handcrafted. Um, so we are using software tools. In this case, we actually concentrate on Scatterblocks. Um, Scatterblocks is an engine which um, does all the automatic uh, social media scanning. So we can filter on uh, special keywords, or when, when we detect some keywords, we can uh, simply put it in there. And um, it's, it's uh, quite helpful um, to, to verify the information. Um, there's a little tool built inside that even is able to detect bots. So if uh, a bot is spreading uh, rumors or hoaxes, we, uh, this uh, tool is able to detect it. And uh, also very helpful uh, is the Google uh, tr Translate integration, so we can easily uh, translate uh, different languages. Um, that's also a very important point uh, when looking back to Vost Europe. Th that is our uh, or very important thing is that within Europe we can easily um, translate 
um, um, uh, messages or alert messages and a lot of European languages. So it's a bit big the benefit um, for us. Um, for the, um, I want to give you or show you two examples. When our VOST was uh, activated, it was uh, that was our first uh, mission um, during the Tour de France uh, 2017. Um, it started in Düsseldorf. I'm not a big fan of bike races, but uh, so I don't know why they started in D Düsseldorf this year, uh, in 2017. Um, and we were asked from the city to um, to, to um, identify uh, a crowd densities and uh, crowd movements, um, because the the whole shit, uh, the whole uh, city was shut down. Roads were blocked, and there had to be or they built up some mobile bridges so that the pedestrians were able to cross the streets so all of the stuff we detected uh, um, have been uh, has been put into the map and um, it was also um, about detecting unusual or suspicious, uh, suspicious events and situations going on so if people were posting um, uh, lost back, or someone uh, simply noticed a lost back, um, we detected it and immediately could uh, give it to the crisis staff and they uh, would have sent out the police, for example. Um, then our task was uh, to identify hotspots, um, also have a look on the rumors and hoaxes that uh, might be uh, uh, going on, and, uh, of course, for the crisis staff, we did the digital um, mapping. Another example um, was the uh, Vorwinkler Flohmarkt, also <laughs> in um, September 17. Um, uh, Flohmarkt means flea market, uh, and the Vorwinkler uh, flea market, um, it is in Wuppertal. Um, once was the biggest uh, flea market in the world, um, with uh, two uh, I think uh, 250,000 visitors on one day. And um, the special about Wuppertal, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a valley, and uh, in the valley there's a main road, and a very important traffic route, and they, for the flea market, they simply had to block it. And Another thing, what is uh, Wuppertal very famous about is the uh, Schwebebahn. Um, it's a, yeah, it's hardly to describe, but but it's or no, the picture is too small. There are some, um, uh, yeah, there's a monorail. Some you can call it monorail that is uh, riding above the main street. So um, also in this point, it was. Uh, uh, um, you want to show it with a pointer? Yeah, but it's nearly not. <laughs> no, it's not possible. Um, it's um, yeah. We also had to check out the the crowd density, um, the movements, and um, when we started to prepare for that uh, tasks, uh, we also detected a lot of uh, webcams in Wuppertal. So we put them directly on the map. And um, when the flea market was uh, busy and running, uh, we were um, suddenly uh, noticing uh, via the social media that a lot of people were um, making movies from, from the Schwebebahn, this uh, monorail train. And it was a present for us because uh, we regularly had uh, movies to see the crowd moving, movements on the ground and it was uh, quite easy to uh, geolocate them because um, all those uh, the, the rails have some numbers on their on their uh, uh, side, so we or, uh, always knew the exact position. Um, yeah, and uh, now uh, it's already Holger's turn um, to talk about the Kubas project. Yeah, then thank you. I will take over. Um, yeah, I would do it. Uh, first was right now about the social media analysis, and right now we come to the uh, second uh, 
aim or second um, task of the WASP team. It's a collaboration and coordination. And at the moment, if I'm right, you don't have a tool for that. And that's why uh, WASP is looking for how to do that. And we have the Kubas research project. It's uh, just uh, done. Um, we had uh, two weeks ago the last presentation of it. And uh, Kubas stands for Coordination of Spontaneous Volunteers for Disaster Response and Recovery. As I mentioned, it's a research project whose uh, partners and uh, universities you are seeing on the screen were participating in this project. It was over three years. And uh, yeah, right now we are looking forward that maybe Wost and THW will take out some parts of it. What is Kubas about? Um, I have uh, firstly the idea why um, this universities and this organization come up with this idea. Um, as you know, in Germany we have a few big rivers and this picture is taken from the Elbe River. It's in Halle, it's uh, south of uh, Berlin, a big city and uh, all, I don't know, five to ten years there's a big flooding. And 2013 there was another flooding and uh, at this time, yeah, mostly the whole city was, uh, <laughs> the main road was this water and there were many people just arriving and helping and nobody knows where are they. I mean, the official um, department of the state or the fire brigade with their C2 systems knows where are their um, units, fire departments, THW or um, police, but they don't know where are all the volunteers. And they came up with an idea that they need to know a little bit more that those people can help exactly where the help is needed. And uh, yeah, I will just fill up with a few more images how it looks like here. You see the professional in the top, it's from the fire. Fighters and down you see the yeah just volunteers which could be the neighbor could be somebody who is traveling just across the country and we're helping there and it happens that uh, there were social media blogs and also there yeah, are kind of these tweets and so on help here help there but it was not co coordinated with the official um, yeah stuff and that's why this idea here comes up that uh, they play a new role in disaster response and recovery but you have somehow to manage them even if they just show up and uh, so the challenges was coordination cooperation and communication of course with uh, volunteers and uh, the main goals in this project um, were of course how you can um, coordinate them, as I mentioned already, right person to the right place at the right time. I mean that you don't put some sandbags somewhere where you don't need them, for example. And uh, yeah, then cooperate according to the capacity with the, I mean to their capacity of the volunteers, what they can do that they offer exactly this to the official stuff, official um, agencies. And uh, I will just show you an image how we get this step by step and how later it could be also an approach for the WOST uh, German or WOST Germany. Um, in a disaster management, I don't know, they get a request just help here or something. And our idea is that the Kuba system is like a standby system, like a standby platform somewhere online. And if something happens, they just start this Kuba system and somebody can registrate themselves. How they know about it? It's just the flood is coming. You want to turn on the water now? You forgot. <laughs> um, so the Kuba system is started. And uh, people now from social media or from the news, um, if you want to help, you can just uh, download this app and you can register on this um, system. It's just uh, mentioned here that a few citizens just registered and uh, later they can specify their offer. It means that the volunteers can say we can do heavy work, we can just help with some small tasks, maybe we have a car or something, but it's a um, pre-designed um, uh, fields where you can fill in what you can do. It's not like uh, you can write messages or something because nobody will read it. It's like this Kuba system has an automatic um, yeah, tool behind or automatic platform where this matched later. So the volunteers offered 
for example, I can help from 8 to, I don't know, 12, and I have a possibility to do heavy, really strong work, and I have, I don't know, good clothes for working hard. Um, then the next step is that the disaster management uh, staff will specify the request and will, they will say, okay, we need exactly that. For example, THW need here on the river some help with putting sandbags for the, to reject or to protect some, I don't know, special areas. Or the Red Cross or the fire, the other sign is a German fire brigade, also needs something. And uh, then it's matched together. You see this interaction with the red um, flash and uh, the volunteers get automatically alert from the Kubas system and people who had exactly say, okay, we are available during this certain time, they get from the system automatically the alert because they were matched to this um, task. And uh, then, that's just animation, they um, could come to this place and could uh, start their work there. We um, put in the system also a geolocation because you can imagine if there's a fire brigade working already and, I don't know, 50 or 500 volunteers will arrive immediately, it's kind of difficult to register them and so on. So when they register in the Kubas app, they also put a sign and later um, automatically by a geofence, the system knows when they arrived and they put them right now they arrived. We also have uh, regulations about um, a law that they have uh, assurance during that time. Um, I think it's pretty good, I just, no, here. Here you see the overview, so that um, this is, it was in the past a really big problem, um, that it's solved that a uh, person who would like to help there it's, has a certain, yeah, it has assurance, if you want to say like that, because in the past the people just came and helped and a little bit later they say, okay, I broke my leg during this, I don't know, flood and uh, the government has to pay for it, even they couldn't really prove it and right now with this kind of system they have uh, a proof because it could run in the C2 system and there everything is um, written down in real time. So what you see here, it's maybe yeah, kind of complicated, but it's just an overview or a draft about what I presented before. On the left side you see the volunteers and uh, the device could be then an app where they say, okay, we are helping or not. It could be as well online. I mean, it could be also social media or so on. We are not programming that interface yet, but um, because the app is most common. In the middle you see the Kubas platform, this is this Kubas system where the automatically yeah, match um, is happens during the, oh, for the request from the C2 system, this is above where it's written disaster management system and uh, this request comes in the Kubas platform, in the Kubas system, it's matched with the, what the offer is from the volunteer side and then when it's really matched the stuff get the response, okay, we have like, I don't know, 20 people who can help you during this time. What we um, do not um, change, it's uh, there written on the right side, the blue box, uh, the devices. Um, in uh, Germany, the, it depends if it's a fire or a police, it doesn't matter. They use radio and uh, passengers and other tools. We do not interact or change anything in this communication because we say they have a good standard there and they should leave it like it is. But if they need volunteers, they will go by this official way to the disaster management system, to the C2 system, and just uh, say their request and then it goes automatically. So this is just yeah, a draft for the, the overview about the whole system. If you want to see how it uh, looks like, we have here screenshots from the app. So it's uh, pretty um, easy and to have a really easy usability. I mean, you just register yourself, put in a name and email address and so on. And then there's written uh, Fähigkeiten and uh, Zeiträume. It means you just put in the task you can do and you tell the time when you are available. And uh, on the middle, unfortunately we have now, I don't know if you see it here right now, there's then the time slot and then you have here 
for example, an, uh, yeah, an offer and you say, okay, I can do this and you then go and there's written already accept or reject this task because it could be also something happens. And of course we use the navigation in the smartphone. Um, on the other side, we have a screenshot of the task manager. There we use standards, so you also can use this in the C2 system. It's not necessary to um, use this uh, online platform. You can use your normal C2 system and put the request out of the system by a standard um, request. And yeah, this is just uh, the request, and here's the second screenshot about um, when there is we yeah, already a task to set up. Um, what is really, or what was the aim and what we really get with this system is that you can automatically deal during the command center and the volunteers and this is also possible that everything is during normal time. I mean, I mean when there's no disaster, it's on standby, it's just a sleeping platform and you don't have a pre-registration of any volunteers. And this is really helpful because you never know if somebody moved to another city or something and if you have spontaneous volunteers, they don't want to give you or their data before something happens. So they can really come there and say, okay, right now we show up, we want to help or we don't. And that's um, what we get from the feedback from the government or from certain organizations that this is really good because this was the problem during the floodings I just mentioned at the beginning of my talk. Um, this a uh, little bit complicated slide, I don't want to go in details there, it's just we were thinking right now about how you can um, improve and where you can install this kind of system. And we came to the conclusion that it makes no sense to have this system in a small city because the volunteers can come from the whole region from Germany or even from above, from Europe or from others. That's why we start to talk to THW because they, from the WAS team, just had the need of this kind of system to collaborate with volunteers and to give them also certain tasks and to coordinate them. And that's why we are here on the um, federal level, Bund, and think about that it's uh, there is the best to have this kind of platform and uh, the person or the people who came from Germany, they now maybe the Nina app or Movas, this is already apps from the government for alert. If there's, I don't know, bad weather condition or something, by this app you get an alert and we would like to um, put the two apps together and say, okay, if there's alert and you can help, then just switch to Kubas and give your offers, you may help. And if you say, okay, I cannot help because alert is just above my house and I have to, I don't know, evacuate myself, then you get help from others. That is the main idea behind and on this slide you see many flashes and how the system is connected. Um, of course, it's the idea if you have on the top level this kind of system that you're connected to the button, to the city. I mean, here is written down Kreis, Kreis Freistadt. It means to the city, to the really citizens where if something happens, the fire brigade or the police is act in action. So this is the idea behind. We are in contact with uh, THW and uh, they found our idea pretty interesting and I think later when we done with the third part with crisis mapping we can discuss a little bit about it because this we have actually some question <laughs> prepared for that. So I think we'll take over it okay. or give over to you. Um, as uh, Holger already mentioned uh, this flood in 2013 yeah was a little turning point for, for, the, for the German government not uh, only because um, suddenly such uh, interesting uh, applications like Kubers uh, have been invented, but it also was a little, um, yeah, the, the birth of the German Wost because um, um, the government or the crisis staff in the field detected that, that suddenly um, uh, spontaneous uh, volunteers or helpers popped up somewhere August organized them uh, themselves and uh, of course uh, it would be very 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 helpful to uh, somehow to control them or simply give them tasks because 
of course, those volunteer groups don't have the complete uh, overview about a, um, a crisis region. And um, so um, the idea of a WOST also was to um, have people that are checking the online media and uh, they, they are um, so-called trusted agents, um, trusted agents because they are some, yeah, some kind, um, they have a um, um, civil protection background or are firefighters or members of the THW, so that the, they are simply trustful for the government uh, when they uh, detect and uh, they know the structures simply that are uh, active during a crisis. And um, interesting th thing was, an interesting thing was that uh, also, during this um, uh, flood uh, of the River Elbe, um, there, are, there were also volunteers that started digital mapping. And um, here's one example from the city of Dresden. We also have one uh, example, a little bit, uh, I think it's Halle, Leipzig region. And um, they, are, yeah, they simply uh, uh, were interested in, that fl uh, in this uh, flood, as you can say so, and uh, made a map with uh, um, stations for the sandbag filling. And um, yeah, actually, we also work with uh, uh, Google Maps to do all the work, and there are much more professional ways to do that. And. Um, so <laughs> it's again me. Yeah. It's okay. A yeah. As uh, Volker already mentioned, the WOST team settled up firstly with the social media part, and the other two tasks came up a little bit later. And uh, especially for the crisis mapping, they had firstly this Google solution, but it's not. Um, I mean. You all know that there are other and maybe better solutions. And uh, that's why, of course, the use of co uh, OSM data or humanitarian OpenStreetMap open data as well. But also they work together with ESRI. They have, or ESRI offers the disaster response program. A few of you may know this. It's uh, just a supporting program where you can get free of charge um, Zeus uh, GIS technology, which is just mentioned here on the board, like data, software, and of course some apps and technical support if you need. And this gives opportunities that in case something, some disaster strikes, that you really fast will get a response and you can set up a platform to work with. Um, please remind that we are talking about a governmental organization here and that's why for them it's kind of difficult to have um, to lot open source software because they need the knowledge and uh, they don't have so many professionals in the THW or in this government organization which has a GIS background. That's why for them it helps if a company like ESRI gives them yeah, some professional software. But of course uh, they use the data and for the data they use uh, OpenStreetMap or I bring you here some examples where they use some satellite data and uh, other data from remote sensing sensors. Um, I don't know who heard about it. Uh, last year there was a big fire in uh, Meppen. It's in the northwest of Germany. It's yeah, it's uh, yeah was a really big thing for us because uh, it was an old M army place, and so there was a lot of detonation from old uh, weapons and so on. So it was also really dangerous for the fire fighters but also for the others and uh, in this example you see how several organizations work together. This is uh, again the federal level, state level and then the local levels and uh, on the top you have THW as a federal agency and uh, here the Federal Office of Civil Protection. They work together with a Copernicus of a um, remote sensing um, data and then with the army because it was on army base and of course uh, with the fire brigades from whole north of Germany and the link between all those organizations was a map. I mean it was all about the data, about OSM data and about the Copernicus data which was uh, yeah, taking during this time or which was 
giving and helping them to making decisions. And uh, that's why, since that, we are, of course, also working together with THW because they um, saw that yeah, it's all about data in case you need, uh, in case you have an emergency and it's all about up to date, about actual and uh, data which is not older than a few hours maybe. Um, here you see again uh, a little bit text but for me it's more important to show you the map. It's a photo of a C2 system and this C2 system connected all those different organizations during this uh, fire and it was set up in I think six hours and this was, I mean they don't have any systems before, they were working with paper and uh, pen. So, and that's why it was amazing that it was possible and it was so easy that they could use it. And of course there was uh, some people from Catastro office or volunteers in the field who collect the data to put it in the systems. But for them it was really necessary to use it and yeah, it was a big help to deal with this fire. Um, there are a few other examples of uh, disaster response program from ESRI around the world, refugee crisis, earthquake, and so on. Um, I just have to look a little bit about the time. Uh, I will come to the conclusion and I hope we have time for a few questions. Um, my conclusion is that this three um, yeah, task from the worst is right now, um, yeah, it's, it's that's it's what we can fulfill, but uh, the WOST, uh, actually in Germany we have uh, 20 members in our WOST team and it's uh, so not that uh, much. We, we, we have regional WOSTs uh, um, um, now, but uh, of course it's important for us to uh, get some more um, support and of course uh, tools like Kubers or Disaster Response Program um, would be very interesting for us even our mapping or our mapping team consists of two people so <laughs> a lot of work uh, to do for them so it would be great to uh, get into contact with yeah the i think this mappers. is also the question to you to the audience i mean this is just the conclusion uh, because of the time i will just skip these two slides and we'll go to the perspective the perspective of course is about um, to put the relevant information together and of course we have the basic information that's just a base map or something but then it's a thematic and event information like real-time information and all this goes together in situational awareness and then for as you mentioned already trusted for the governmental organization and they really need trusted information and that's why um, I think there's still a lot to do and yeah we are open for your questions and uh, we are looking forward to work together with HOT because we really need those information, those data, to get it in this platform, in this uh, yeah, task from THW. So, if you want to get in touch with us, our contact, and yeah, we have a question. Are there any questions? If not, we have questions for you. <laughs> but, yeah, go ahead. It's probably less related to, to the GIS part of the project itself, uh, but I, I would like to hear a little bit more about the social media analysis that you did and uh, especially the social media verification or the content verification and uh, the geolocation. Do you uh, completely rely on the scatter blocks or do you know more about the methodology they use? Um, in, in general, the international boss. They owe, there are several software tools, not only Scatterblocks, but uh, Data Miner and Public Sonar and uh, or VisiBrain is well known in France, I think. Um, the, yeah, the, the geolocation and the verification, it's, it's, uh, we don't use any AI for it. It's, it's simply uh, work uh, we have to do ourselves. So looking for uh, the weather conditions, uh, if they are equal to uh, the real conditions outside, um, we do a lot of with the um, with the reverse image uh, search from Google. Um, if the if this picture was published before in another event, and uh, for the geolocalization, we. Um, often use really simply street view to, to uh, it's it's uh, time consumption 
sometimes unchanged, but uh, it's really, yeah, sometimes it only can be step by step to have uh, verified information on that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, but so, I think it will change over time. There will be AIs one day yeah, and so on. I mean, yeah. that's also where we learn about. I mean, it's, it's growing and also this team and THW will grow soon. And of course, we need more technical support because you cannot do everything by human. I mean, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, are there more questions or other questions? If not, we put two questions on the screen. I don't know, we have a few more minutes or it's over the time? Okay. Thank you.